Hello everyone and welcome to another Cardboard of the Rings Deck Spotlight. Today's deck comes from our very own Chad and is called the Borders of Bree. So if you want to check the list out in its entirety, you can click the link in the description below. Otherwise, we're just going to jump into a couple of the cards, explain a couple key combos, and let you guys have fun with it. So the three heroes in the deck are Sam Gamgee, Tom Cotton, and Damrod. The key combo here is actually centered around Damrod and two new cards that were introduced in the Crossing of Poros Adventure Pack. The first is Followed. It's a single cost trap attachment, Tactics. Uh, you, what you do though is you don't put it into the staging area, you put it into your play area unattached. And when it's unattached, it will attach itself to the next eligible enemy that engages you. And while that attached enemy is engaged with you, it will reduce the total threat in the staging area by X, where X is that enemy's printed threat cost. So that's already a great attachment and a great trap in general. I would recommend a lot of tactics decks that just want to contribute a little more pseudo questing to the quest phase. This is already a great card to throw in, but what makes this card really good in the Borders of Bree is the second card that we got from Crossing of Poros, the Emin Arnen Ranger. His stats are not that great. It's just zero willpower, one attack, one defense, and two hit points. It costs two. But basically what happens is when the ranger commits to the quest, you pick an enemy with a trap attachment, and the ranger will get plus X willpower, where X is the chosen enemy's printed threat. Ideally, it will be the enemy that you have engaged previously with followed, and say you are engaged with the Uruk Prowler, which has three threat, the MNRN ranger and followed will essentially create a six-point swing. Uh, which is pretty good for just a two card combo. Another thing worth noting is that the Eminem and Ranger can also just pick any enemy with the trap attachment. If you have, say, used Forest Snare to keep another player from being attacked constantly, or Ranger Spikes to keep an enemy in the staging area, you can pick those enemies as well. And in particular to Ranger Spikes, though it does reduce the threat, the Eminem and Ranger looks at the printed threat, not the modified threat, which is pretty sweet. As far as gameplay goes, it's pretty straightforward. Sam, Gamgee, and Damrot are going to be your primary questers on turn one and maybe even turn two. What you want to do is just get some decent willpower and buy yourself some time to lay down a trap, ideally followed, and Tom Cotton will be your defender. If you draw it, throw a Hobbit Cloak on Tom Cotton, and then later on, if you're able to pull off a Song of Wisdom on him as well, throw him a Burning Brand. Raise the Shire is also in there to sneak in hobbits when needed, and the primary target is going to be Rosie Cotton. She will be your top priority. If you have not used Rosie Cotton yet in a hobbit deck, go do it right now. If you use her in conjunction with Fast Hitch, I mean, she can boost their willpower, she can boost their defense, their attack. If Sam needs to get in for a little extra attack, or if Tom Cotton needs a little extra defense and you don't have a hobbit cloak in time, Rosie Cotton is just amazing. Chad has a couple copies of Halbrad in here, and Halbrad's just a great ally all around. He's even better in a Hobbit build. If you don't know him, he's a 4 cost leadership attachment. He's got 2 2 2 stats with 3 hit points, which is pretty great, and his cost does get reduced for each enemy engaged with you. And you might think, you know, throw him in a Dunedain build, but he does really well with Hobbits because of his second line, which says that each enemy engaged with you gets plus 10 engagement cost. This will allow Sam Gamgee to trigger more often. This will keep Raise the Shire functioning. This will keep Hobbit Cloak going, especially since you don't have cards like Lord Pippin, the hero, in here. Chad mentions this is primarily a deck he has played solo and has had some success with it as far as multiplayer is concerned. But you want to have, according to Chad, another player with some more starting threat because the encounter deck is just going to probably get ahead of you. So that is pretty much the deck. Like I said, check out the link in the description if you want to check out the rest. And otherwise, go have fun with it and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what you thought. Thanks so much again, everybody. Have a good one. See ya.